Hello, I am Professor Stephen Abbott and in this series I will be using HSPIP to illustrate some of the power of Hansen solubility parameters. In this clip we will look at what Hansen solubility parameters are and look at the values for some typical molecules. One of the principles of a working scientist is to get the most information for the least work. And it's often very important to get information about our molecules, and we want to do that with the least possible effort. One way to do this is to use terms like hydrophilic and hydrophobic, or polar and nonpolar. They are low effort, but they give us very little useful information because the world of chemistry cannot be described in such simple terms. A much more powerful way to think about molecules is via HSP, Hansen Solubility Parameters. And using the HSPIP software, which I have here, it makes it very easy to explore the whole of HSP's space. Here I want to show you a better way to describe the essence of a molecule using the three HSP parameters, DD, DP and DH. I have here a selection of solvents. The reason we have them will be explained in a later video and they each have the three values of DD, DP, DH. If I click on any column in HSPIP, it sorts it, and now we see that diethyl ether has 14.5 DD, methanol has got a bit more, and if I click again, we have pyridine has a large amount of DD, cresol has got less, and so forth. DD is van der Waals, it's polarizability, it's the amount of electrons sloshing around in the molecule. And something like pyridine has got a lot of electrons sloshing around with that aromatic and the nitrogen group, cresol simile. DMSO has that big sulfoxide group, benzene and so forth. At the other extreme we have rather dull molecules like ether, methanol, hexane, which don't have too many free electrons sloshing around. Note that even though they're relatively small, they still have large amounts of it. When we look at other numbers with DP and DH, we'll see that 14.5 is quite a lot. And this is an important point. Every molecule has a lot of DD, even the silicones have something like 12. DD, van der Waals, is what keeps solvents together. So although we find it a rather dull parameter, it's very important to keep track of it. The next parameter is DP. If I click and sort, then we find that cyclohexane, benzene, and hexane have no polarity. And at the other extreme, we have acetonitrile, which is polarity on a stick, methyl, carbon, nitrogen, in a straight line. The large sulfoxide group on DMSO is also very polar, and something like uh, ethanol is somewhere in the middle, cresol, so forth. DP is very easy to understand, our intuitions about it are largely correct. The third parameter is DH, which is hydrogen bonding, and again if we sort, then hexane has none of it, and at the other extreme we have water with lots of it, methanol with plenty of it, ethanol with somewhat less, because the extra CH2 group going from methanol to ethanol dilutes the amount of hydrogen bonding. There's an important point here. Terms like polar and nonpolar are misleading. Some like ethanol has lots of DH, hydrogen bonding, but not all that much DP, polarity. Whereas something like acetonitrile has a lot of polarity, but not very much DH. And that's one of the many strengths of HSP. They capture this crucial difference between simple polarity and simple hydrogen bonding. So you need the three parameters. DD is what keeps things together in general. DP and DH are the special effects of polarity and hydrogen bonding. 